Welcome to the hip sequence focusing on Hindi squat. Begin in Tadasana. Breathe in, take the arms wide and overhead. Breathe out, forward fold, flat back. Hands to floor or shins for halfway lift. Reach the chest forward. Breathe out, forward fold. Breathe in to flat back, push the ground away, rise to standing. Breathe out, arms wide, forward fold. Hands to floor or shins, halfway lift. Press the knees, the thighs back. Breathe out, forward fold. Breathe in, flat back, push the ground away, rise to standing. Breathe out, forward fold. Hands to floor or shins, halfway lift. We'll just stay in this position for a few breaths. Press the knees, the thighs back as you reach your spine long. Tuck your chin slightly, crown of the head extends forward. Draw the shoulders down and away from the ears. Breathe out, forward fold. Let the head go. Let the spine hang from the hips. Widen your feet to the width of your hips, bend your knees, arms out to the sides. Slowly sink your hips down until they're in line with your knees. We want to allow the trunk to come between the knees, the belly to come between the knees. Push the ground away, rise to standing. If it feels good, you can look up. Breathe out, forward fold. Breathe in, halfway lift. Press the knees and the thighs back, reach the chest forward. Breathe out, forward fold. Bend the knees lots, move to flat back and drop the hips down in line with the knees. This is called bear pose. Push the ground away, rise to standing. If it feels good, you can look up. Breathe out, forward fold. Hands to floor or shins, halfway lift. Breathe out, forward fold. Breathe in, sink down, weight equal and even through the foot. Breathe out, straight back into forward fold. Widen the feet for big toe bind or you can grab the ankle for an ankle bind. If you're taking the big toes, you can bend your knees as much as you want and your index finger and your thumb wrap around your big toe. Breathe in, lift the chest, breathe out and fold. Use the arms to pull yourself down. Again, the knees don't need to be straight, they can be bent. Just do whatever suits your body. Widen the feet for Hindi squat. Slowly sinking the hips down. And your Hindi squat may be high or low. It's not really important as long as you feel you're getting some good work in the hips. Hug the thighs in, push the elbows into the thighs, spread through the palm and draw the sternum through to the hands. Slowly push the ground away, rise to standing. Just gently drawing the core up, drawing the tailbone down. Shoulders drop away from ears and then bend the knees and sink back down into Hindi squat.
just building a little bit of heat, a little bit of work in the hips, in the legs. Once again, wherever you get to is where you get to. Draw your chest forward, hug your thighs in, press out with the elbows. Reach up through the crown of the head. Hands to floor or blocks, step it back into plank. And you can start your vinyasa on your knees if you want to. High to low push up. Cobra or up dog. Pressing back into downward facing dog. If it feels good, pedal out the feet. Or you can sway the hips left and right. If stillness feels good, then be still. Stepping one leg forward into lunge. Step the other leg forward and fold. Widen the feet to the width of the hips and take your bind again, whether that's at the ankle or around the big toe. Halfway lift, reach the chest forward while you've got your bind and then use the arms to draw your body down. Breathe out. Draw the shoulders away from the ears. Elbows flare out to the sides. Hands to floor, widening the feet for Hindi squat. Gently sink the hips down, moving through to flat back as soon as you can. And then wherever you get to is wherever you get to. Hug the knees and the thighs in. Press the elbows out. Press through all the knuckles of the palm and slowly push the ground away, rise to standing. Draw the core up, drop the tailbone down. Long spine as you sink through the knees, returning down into Hindi squat. Make the legs active participants in this work. So if at any time you could push the ground away and rise to standing. Take one hand to the floor and gently turning away from that hand, use it as an anchor against your inner thigh. And your other arm can go out to the side or it can reach up, whatever feels good on the shoulder. And twist the body, twist through the torso. Use the thigh to press against. If you want to, you can look down or you can look up at your hand. Gently returning to center. Other hand to floor. So this is the side option, just keeping the arm at the side or you can lift the arm overhead. Use the inner thigh as an anchor. Push your arm against the inner thigh and use it to pivot through your spine. Try to keep your weight equal and even in left and right feet. Slowly return to center. Bring the hands in front of you and push the ground away, lift the hips. Now this is an option. You can stay with a forward fold here or you can move through to crow, which is where you stack your knees on the back of your arms or you hug your knees around your arms and slowly add weight to the hands until the feet become completely unweighted. So this is as much of a core exercise as anything else. Draw your core in, drop your ribs down, draw your hips up, keeping the knees tight in using the core will help you balance in this position. If you can keep your knees tight into your arms, whether they're on the back of your arms or whether they're outside your arms, as I'm showing now, 
And if you want to lift the feet, you can. Otherwise, you're just shifting a little more weight into the hands. Gently coming down, Hindi squat, push the ground away, rise to standing. Feet together, Tadasana, breathe in, arms wide. Breathe out, forward fold. Hands to floor or shins, halfway lift, reach the chest like cobra. Breathe out, forward fold. Step one leg back into lunge, step the other leg back into plank. If you'd like to skip the vinyasa, you can. Otherwise, knees or toes, high to low push up. Cobra or up dog. Keep some firmness and support in the core. Pushing back into downward facing dog. Reach the heels down, reach the hips high. And just gently pivoting the hips to the left and the right. If you want to, you can pedal out the feet. Step one leg forward into lunge. Plant the back heel, rise up to warrior one. Hands to hips, draw the back hip forward and sink the front hip down, firm it down and in to the midline. Draw up through the arches of both legs, arms out to the side. And gently pivot the body to the side, opening up into warrior two. Make sure the toes are released. Reach the front arm forward, extended side angle. Hand can be on your thigh, elbow to thigh, or hand to block or to floor. Drop the hips. Reach the top arm to the ceiling, or it can come over the head like you're pushing on something. Keep the back leg active by pressing down into the ground. Gently returning to standing. Turn both feet to the same side. Hands to hips. With a long spine, hinge at the hips. Breathe out. Hands can stay at the hips or they can come to the floor, to the feet or to the shins. If they're at the floor, hug the elbows in like you're doing a chaturanga or a crow. Draw the shoulders away from the ears. Use the weight of the hands to pull yourself down. Push the ground away, move to flat back, breathe in. Turn one foot out to the side. Option to lift the toes of the other foot off the ground. We're going to sink towards that side and you might end up in a higher position or a low position. It depends on the flexibility in the ankle. It's okay to come up onto the ball of the foot of the side that you're sitting towards. One hand is on the ground using the inner thigh as an anchor. The other hand reach to the ceiling or to the side and pivot your body.
return to center, turn the other foot out and start to lunge to that side and you may do a high lunge or you may pick the toes up, go for a low lunge. Either way, use the inner thigh as an anchor, reach the other arm to the side or to the ceiling and turn your body towards that side. Again, this position mostly depends on ankle flexibility and you don't need to have the heel on the floor in order to do this position. Return to center, put some weight in the hands, walk back to the middle. Bend the knees, look forward, hands to hips, push the ground away, rise to standing. Hands to floor, step back into plank. You can skip the vinyasa if you want, otherwise high to low push up, cobra, cobra or up dog, meeting back in downward facing dog. Look forward, step the other leg forward into lunge, plant the back heel, rise up for warrior one. Hands to hips, draw the back hip forward. As you firm the front hip in and drop it down. You can put your hands on your core and your lower back to see if they're equal. And a slight lean forward will take compression out of the lower back arms wide. Gently opening it up into warrior two. Deep breath in, start to reach forward, pivoting from the hips, elbow to thigh, or hand to block or to floor, or extended side angle. Arm can be, arm can be reaching to the ceiling or it can be reaching up over the head. Imagine you're pressing down on something with that top arm. Make one long line from the top arm through to the back leg and keep the back leg active by pressing the foot into the floor. Gently returning to center, push the ground away, rise. Turn the feet so they're both pointing forward. Hands to hips, hinge forward at the hips. Hands to floor or shins, forward fold. If your hands are at the floor, hug the elbows in like you're doing a crow or a chaturanga and draw the shoulders away from the ears. Push the ground away, halfway lift, peel the chest and then use the weight of the arms to pull yourself down, breathe out. Push the ground away, bend the knees, walk your feet in so they're uh, underneath your hips. And option to move through to crow or you can do a forward fold. If you're doing crow, uh, knees are on the backs of the arms, on the triceps. Hug them in, 
you don't have to move fully into the crow. You can just shift the weight to whatever degree you want into the hand. Stick the tricep to the knee, keep them tight using your core and shift the weight forward until you can unweight the feet. Press down through the knuckles of the hand but allow the fingertips to be like spider legs that they will um, press or relax to help you balance. Gently coming down to a seated position. Take one arm up, take the other arm out to the side. Keep the hip anchored of the side that you're leaning away from. Drop that hip to the ground, reach the hand Good. over the head. Return to center and gently bananaing to the other side. Gently returning to center. One hand on one knee. Lift the spine long and twist. Return to center. Other hand to other knee. Lift the spine long and twist. 